Hello and welcome to another episode of The Outside Edge. UAE has gone from strength to strength and we've seen the development of the game with the UAE playing the World Cup in 2015, a lot of under-19 World Cups as well. And they've beaten a national test playing side in the past few years. So as we look at the past, present and future of the UAE cricket, I have some very special guests today. Mohammed Tokir, is captain of UAE for the 2015 World Cup. Ahmed Raza, the current UAE captain, and Ali Shan Sharfu, under-19 superstar, was leading the Emirates Blues team here in the Emirates D50. So we'll start with Mohammed Tawkir. You've been following the Emirates D50 for the past few days, and I think for the last few weeks and months, there's been a lot of buzz around domestic cricket. But the 2015 World Cup and the build-up to that was not very easy. Can you just share a little bit about what are the challenges you guys faced leading up to the 2015 World Cup? First of all, thank you very much for having me here. Uh, and uh, yeah, it was absolutely an honor uh, representing UAE at, uh, at the World Cup in Australia, New Zealand. But uh, of course, it was a very, very challenging uh, journey for all the players and everyone who was part of that uh, uh, weather they were part of the team or not, but at, at the circuit, it was quite a quite a difficult uh, and challenging journey for all of us. I'll start. Uh, I came uh, into UAE team for the first time in 1996 uh, as uh, and played uh, Asian Cricket Council tournament, and then uh, <clears throat> going forward, uh, we played few World Cup qualifying events. Uh, and uh, as you know, I, I can see it's, it's, it, it, there's, there's a plenty of infrastructure and grounds and academies have, have you, as you see today, it was never there uh, then, you know. And uh, so for us, it was, it was really challenging to, to play cricket. And uh, most of us, uh, most of the players were w working full time. Yeah. They were employees, yeah. uh, so they either had eight to four, nine to five jobs, and then come up in the evenings uh, and practice at, at Charger Stadium. Uh, so I'm, I'm talking about 2000 till 2010, 2012. Yeah. Uh, so this was a routine for most of us. Uh, uh, a lot of sacrifice. Uh, it was very difficult to manage time between your job, your cricket, your families. Uh, so, and there, then there were many players who were traveling daily from Abu Dhabi also. There were players who were, uh, you know, crew, like Foram Khan, he was, uh, he was a crew at Emirates Airline. And uh, he was doing flights, you know, coming back, uh, working, uh, working for, and, and coming and doing his trainings. So there were, there were days which, when I have not, met my children i have not seen my uh, my family you know i used to work uh, go to the office in the morning come back uh, you know finish my work at five o'clock rush to the stadium do practice finish practice at 10 p.m come back uh, uh, at home couldn't couldn't see my family for a few days you know so <laughs> yeah it was it was uh, it was challenging but I, I'm, I'm very happy that we have moved forward uh, from those circumstances and uh, uh, you know, now now a lot of players are professionals. They've been contracted, uh, so they are all they do have to do is is play cricket, and it's it's amazing. Uh, you know, it's fantastic. Well, at, at your time, I think if I if I remember correctly, the only turf and grass was Sharjah Stadium. Everything else was cement and and uh, sand. Yeah. So even if you played fifty overs over there, that transition was very difficult. Yes. Yes, of course. Uh, Sharjah Stadium was uh, was there. Uh, Dubai was not built. Ajman grounds were were not there. Uh, I think there were there were one or two grounds uh, uh, in Jeddah, Emirates Airline grounds, yeah, yeah, yeah. for some time, and then they were demolished. Also, so we played a bit of cricket there. Yes, plenty of uh, plenty of concrete cricket. Uh, uh, yes, it was. Uh, but but we were all very very passionate, uh, you know that that bunch, uh, and uh, we used to play a lot of fifty over cricket, uh, not much of T20, uh, you know. So uh, 
So that that was one thing very good uh, with uh, with with that with that. But group. that competition was amazing. Yeah. Fly Emirates had guys like Amjad Jawed playing. You had consolidated shipping. Yeah. There were so many good yeah. local teams playing the Bukhater yeah. League. You had Air India, yeah. some guest team coming from Oman as well. Of course. So I think that was probably why that that additional competition was what kept you guys going. Of course, I I, I, tr- I absolutely agree with you. UNB had a, had an amazing team. Delsco had a very good team. A lot of uh, first class Pakistani cricketers were playing. As you said, Air India. I once played against Rendra Sehwag. He was uh, coming and playing for <laughs> for Air India. Uh, and uh, similarly, uh, you know, other clubs also. Sh- Sri Lankan touring sides yeah. used to come and play. English, England counties used to come and play against uh, our domestic tournaments. So, yeah, amazing, amazing uh, journey. <laughs> nice. Then, well, thank you for sharing with us. I'll come back to you in a bit. Ahmed, you've been part of that roller coaster as well. I think when, uh, with the 2015 World Cup, you missed out on it. But since then, you've been an integral part of the growth of the game. So why don't you talk us to a little bit about, again, those challenges you face, but then how has that infrastructure developed and you know, what is it that you see now that you think will take UAE up to the next level? Yeah, I'm, I think I'm one of the few players who've actually seen the both sides of it. I mean, I've uh, played under uh, Tokibai a lot. I started playing, uh, the first time I played Bukhate League uh, was alongside him. And again, I think back then, uh, I mean, there was so much, like, there was so much to learn from these these stalwarts of UAE cricket. I mean, we all looked up, to, as kids, we all looked up to, to Tokir Bhai, uh, Ali Asad, Khurram Khan, Arshad Ali. I mean, I can go on and name so many of those players. We all, we really looked up to them and uh, and they were always there when, whenever we needed help. So, I've, I've seen both sides of uh, of this this transition. Uh, hence, I, I can't take anything for granted uh, for, for us to be in this position. Uh, we are really privileged, uh, and it's it's not a matter of last few years. It's it's the the hard work of of a decade or even more. So I think uh, where where UA cricket is heading right now uh, is it, I mean the graph looks brilliant, uh, but I but I also agree uh, with Tokirbai here that there used to be a lot more 50 over crickets. Hence this tournament becomes even more vital. Uh, you know this this fixture in our in our uh, calendar becomes a really important one because. Uh, because with so much of T20 cricket, uh, you know, I think we we lack that 50 over patience and uh, and how to build an innings and how to ball in tandem, how to be patient with the ball. I think you lose all of that because with T20, you know, the how quickly things change and how uh, how the pace of the game is. Even Ramadan cricket back then used to be a 35 uh, 35 overs yeah. event, and those Oman touring side yeah, used yeah. to come and play in that. Uh, I mean that was, uh, I think, uh, the golden era of uh, of the domestic cricket. But it's good to see that it's going back to where it was. Uh, I think our domestic cricket is getting better, and these addition of D20 and D50 is, uh, I think, it's brilliant. Well, would you think that again there is a little bit more fo- focus on quantity rather than quality? I think at the time when Tokir played, there was a lot more quality. I mean, I can tell you for a fact, the all-rounders like Naimullah and Javed would kill to play in conditions like this. So maybe, as you said, just you can't take those things for granted now, can you? Yeah, I think if you look at domestic teams back then, I think Emirates Airlines had six players who were representing UA. UNB had 15 first-class players back then. Uh, ECB Blues had majority of the UA players playing in that. Uh, so the, the the competition in domestic cricket was a lot. I mean, you could pick Lanka Lions uh, versus NMC and you couldn't tell who's going to win that game. Yeah. So I think that the level of of that cricket was was totally at a different level. Uh, but now again, as I, I've said this before, I think this this tournament and going forward, hopefully, maybe we could make this uh, twice a year D50 because our uh, you know our our bigger goal is to qualify for the 2023 50 over World Cups, and it will be better if we play more 50 over games and. Uh, you know, get uh, get that into our uh, our systems. Nice. So, let's move on to the youth, the future of UA cricket. Alishan, you guys play a lot of 50 over cricket, but it's more of a camp environment. It's not as competitive as playing a tournament here, right? Um, first of all, thank you for having me, and uh, and I feel privileged to be you know uh, next to these two uh, legends of UA cricket. Um, again. Uh, um, yeah, we do play a lot of 50 over cricket uh, and uh, it is more of a camp environment but uh, but I think I rate the I rate the standard you know quite highly because uh, 
you know everyone's at the end of the day playing for their spot and you know they want to do well for themselves and um i think as a setup we're moving towards in the right direction uh with you know the initiative of uh, having two under 19 or under 21 uh, in your 11 even in this tournament so i think um uh i think we're moving towards in the right direction so it's upon us to um, grab these opportunities and move forward but there must be a lot of pressure now you've played one under 19 world cup i think you're going for the second one as well so a lot of eyes on and ears on you guys these two have, have been through the the mud or dragged through the mud so to speak some would think you guys have gotten it on a on a golden spoon so i think you, there is a point to prove there for the for the young guys i mean yeah we are fortunate enough to have uh, you know qualified for this world cup as well but uh, you know i feel that even our last world cup it was a lot of unfinished um, business i would say because uh, you know it was quite heartbreaking how we um, didn't go through to the super 8s um, because of a, a rained out game against south africa so um, hopefully bigger and better things this time and uh, we'll try to make the most out of what we have well i can tell you for a fact everybody will be following what you guys are doing i'm, I'm going to come back to you tokir now you're you're an emirati we've seen very little influence from from the emiratis and emirati families in towards cricket we can understand obviously they don't they don't grasp the fact that you could play for 7 or 8 hours or in the case of a test match play for 5 days without a result uh, i had a very interesting chat with uh, shaji who's been the the pioneer for t10 cricket do you think t10 or the 10 over format or 20 over format could be something that could interest emirati children to look at cricket yeah i i agree with you uh t10 is a is a is a short being a shorter format uh, it it could be attractive uh but uh i think i think cricket is being played here for last 40 50 years and uh, i think we should have developed a uh, few more or produce few more emirati cricketers or uh, introduce the game to the grassroots level i think unfortunately uh, this has has not been done and i was talking to dilip mendes uh, the oman coach uh, a month back and he informed me there are seven omani national cricketers only seven teams oh. of omani national only they are playing their domestic level you know and this is amazing work and I, it was shocking and unfortunately uh, here uh, you know we we uh, i think currently i i don't see any we we had few players in the past who have right. played the game and 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 retired but uh, i think there is not much focus on uh, producing or uh, you know teaching the game yeah. to the grassroots level well one one thing i understand is again this tournament being broadcast on dubai sports and dubai radia there is definitely that shift yeah. towards that demographic to get those kids interested as well i had a chat with najib yeah. um and he mentioned that there is a, a proactive recruitment drive growing on as well in schools amal maybe you can fill us in a little bit about you know what is the plan to help develop this game um from an emirati point of view as well but also how's the the preps for you guys going from the 50 over game now that you want to qualify for the 23 world cup yeah i think uh, rightly said uh, it uh, this work has to be done at the grassroots level uh, we've uh, we've got a, a great setup in the land where which which focuses only on emiratis which which program has been going on for for about 2 to 3 years uh, uh, and again that it's going to take some time uh, i hope we see more emiratis uh, playing this uh, playing this great sport and uh and i think with the dubai riyadh i think we are targeting a new audience we are targeting uh, more emiratis to to this game and hopefully going forward as well i think if if more cricket is televised on dubai riyadh i think we'll we'll have a uh, we'll have a bigger audience we'll have an audience which is which is full of emiratis uh and having said that i think uh, the number of uae grown players uh, has increased as well and i think uh, that goes back to Uh, to to the national team which has been doing well we've introduced contracts uh, uh kids like alishan they see a future here uh, because we've lost a lot of players uh, who've played for the under 19 and then we lose them to to, uh, to to countries like england australia even india pakistan where they go for studies or to explore more opportunities in cricket i think we've uh, we've managed to hold on to players like alishan vritya karthik mehpan they've all made their uh, men's debut as well 
I think we're fortunate to have this lot uh, staying back, back. But again, that goes back to what the national team has done and how we have managed to keep uh, keep them in the country. Because we we spend a lot of time on these youngsters. We we give them opportunities to play, uh, to represent UAE at the at the World Cup stage. So it's it's heartbreaking when we lose them to to other countries because uh, they are home product. We should not be losing them. And I think with the contracts in place, I think we are, we are doing a great job. You're mentoring the under-19 uh, under team. I think you were with them uh, in the last World Cup. Are you mentoring them in this World Cup as well? I mean, I'm always there to help uh, and I and I do that. Not as uh, Ahmed Raza the captain, but as Ahmed Raza the mentor. I, know, I, I mean, I work with them whenever I can, uh, whenever time allows. Uh, and, and it's great to work with them because it's 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 obviously because I'm keeping a closer eye uh, on, on the talent. And then I discuss it with Najib and uh, Robin. Uh, we get uh, Karthik, uh, our analyst, to work on them as well. So from that point of view, I think it's 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 really good that I work with them. Uh, and if if the opportunity comes and the board thinks that uh, I'm good enough to uh, be th their mentor again, I would love to do that. Nice. Well, Alishan, uh, final question for you. We talk about the Under-19 World Cup. I think there's a lot of focus around that. How are the preps? How are you guys thinking, looking at from a visual point? Are you reaching out to guys like Tokir or Khuram, the seniors? to pick on their brains on how do you want to approach a World Cup? Uh, well, uh, I think the prep started a little late, uh, later than we wanted to because of the, the COVID situation and stuff like that because uh, we missed out on the qualifying events and, and a few other practice tours and stuff like that. But uh, again, yes, we have, um, we have a camp going on and uh, you know the players are being closely watched and their performances are being tracked. And again, uh, you know, people like Ahmed Bai, they're always around, uh, you know, around the around the setup and around training sessions. So, you know, our left arm spinners or whoever wants. So, you know, he's always open to them and, uh, you know, goes around helping them. And also, I think uh, with tournaments like these, um, which gives, you know, a lot of uh, expansion towards broadcasting and, you know, um, professional things like that. So, you know, when we go on to a bigger event like the World Cup or, you know, anything like that, uh, you know, we're not new to you know playing on tv or uh you know things like the that. nerves so, settle down a little bit yeah so we well, get I've been, I've been talking to both of you in this past whole tournament i'm just going to focus a little bit with with mohammed tokir here your fondest memory of the 2015 world cup because that was a very good experience for us as uae supporters as well there were some very good performances what was your fondest memory of that world cup well, that was uh, like a dream come true for all of us, uh, you know, the, whoever was uh, at the party there, you know, so uh, we, we thoroughly enjoyed the whole experience, uh, uh, the whole, uh, uh, whether it was Australia leg or New Zealand leg, but uh, uh, one close memory that I can, I can think of is uh, the, the, we were playing a match against uh, uh, in Ireland at Brisbane, Gabba, and uh, that that game was a very very close game, and we had we we should have almost won that match. Uh, I know uh, the matches against Australia, uh, South Africa, India, Pakistan. It was it was a bit too much to ask for yeah. from our side, but uh, that that we we played a very good match against Zimbabwe. Uh, we scored some 280 runs. Uh, and then the match against uh, uh, Ireland, uh, it was a, and it was one of the uh, one of the best match of the whole tournament. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, after probably the the, the South Africa New Zealand semi final. Yeah. Uh, so that was a that was a very interesting match. And then uh, uh, UAE Ireland match was a. So that that was the match that uh, that was very very close to our heart, and it was uh, we we should have won it. And I, I can I still remember the when we finished the match, we we lost the match by I think a wicket or two wickets, and uh, in the last over. So when we came back, we were really all uh, dejected, and uh, uh, you know it was really really tough feeling for all of us to you know. But overall, the the whole. Uh, the whole journey was amazing, amazing, and uh, it was dream come true for all of us. Nice. Well, I hope the two of you can uh, uh, feel the way Mohammed Tokir felt. There are a lot of hopes and ambitions from our side for for you, Ahmed, as the, as the current leader, and Alishan, you as the key component of the under-19 team, but also, uh, you know, future men's team. I want to thank the three of you for coming here today and talking to us. It's been an absolute you. pleasure going down memory lane. As you know, I come from a cricketing background as well, so I've been following the game for a long time. And just this conversation just brings back a lot of memories about Sharjah, Ramadan and the rest of the lot. 
Wish you guys all the best. Hope to see you on the grounds as well. And with that, that's the end of the episode from my crew. I want to wish you guys all the best as we go and watch the second half of the game. <laughs>